I'm very pleased to introduce you to our two presenters of today. One is Anke Jönken, she's the MBA student counselor, and the other one is Dr. Zuck Finken, the program director. During this info session, both will give you lots of information about the MBA program. If you have questions, please feel free to ask. You can use the chat window to do so. We will answer your questions at the end of the presentation. Now I turn the floor over to Anke Jönken and wish you an interesting evening. So, hello everybody and a welcome also from my side to our webinar. Thank you for taking your time. My name is Anke Jönken, I'm a student advisor and I'm in charge of all master's programs full-time and also the MBA programs. At the end of the presentation you're going to see my contact details, so feel free calling or emailing me anytime for open questions. So, first of all, I would like to give you a short overview about some key facts concerning the MBA program. First information, the master will end up with the degree Master of Business Administration MBA. Our MBA, which we are offering only at our campus in Dortmund, is a two-year part-time study program and the target group is our engineers, scientists and business economists for responsible management positions and in general, of course, also people who require business know-how. Um, the program starts each summer semester in April and um, the duration of the program is 22 months or four semesters. In total you will have 15 modules, 11 of um, these will take place in Dortmund and the other four modules abroad, one week each at partner universities in Hong Kong, India, Brussels and the USA. Um, the program is solely taught in the English language and the workload is 90 ECTS. Um, the ISM is accredited since 2004 with this program um, from the German Council of Science and Humanities um, which reflects our good quality of teaching, research and professional uh, education. Also the MBA program is accredited um, by the Foundation uh, of International Business Administration accreditation for the campus in Dortmund. So um, now you can see um, our schedule for the program start of next year's in 2016. The schedule we, determ we determined already now for the reason that our perspective prospective students are able to plan with their company and work time if it's possible or not to join a program due to the required attendance. So the amount of modules is always the same each year and as I already told you in the beginning here you can see the 15 modules over the two years and um, how they are distribu distributed. The regular modules in Dortmund, um, they are always um, four days from Wednesday to Saturday each. And the first two modules abroad will be in the first year in 2016 in Hong Kong and in India. Hong Kong will be in September and India in November. The other two modules abroad will be in the second year in 2017 in Brussels and in the USA. Brussels will be in September and USA in December. All modules abroad are each from Monday until Saturday, as you can see. And of course, you have to calculate also maybe one or two days extra for your arrival and departure. From January, January up until March 2017, the students are going to write their master's thesis and in the end. Also, you can see in gray our um, buffer days three times each two days in January, July and November. Uh, in 2017. Buffer days are just in case that something do not work out, that there might be a little change that we can switch to those days, days which are also blocked. Um, that makes, as you find below, a required attendance of um, 66 days in 25 months. Um, without all Saturdays, um, the requested holidays uh, in two years the student would need is uh, what? 50 and one day, uh, 28 days in the first year and 23 days in the second year. We now switch to the study director of the program, Ms. Zilke Finken. We will also switch screens.
So then, hello from my side. Uh, Silke Finken, I am the uh, program director um, and responsible for the um, uh, for the academic side of the program. And um, what I would like to do is is just to um, lead you broadly through the program content. Um, so uh, the the uh, classes that we have, their content, a little bit of the. Um, uh, general schedule that we want uh, that we go through. So what we start in the first term um, is is mainly with strategic uh, and general management. So you have classes like strategic management, which I usually teach, uh, managing in the global environment, um, but also decision making under uncertainty. So you see those classes um, are geared to giving you a general understanding of the broad uh, management skills that you will need. And in, in the light that we have usually uh, students or applicants from a non-business background, so um, engineers uh, <coughs> and so on, uh, that is something that, uh, that is, is a focus of the uh, MBA general management. Um, so, uh, for, for some students who have a little bit of a background in business administration, there is a slight repetition, but what I found uh, when, when I was talking to those students was also that they in general valued uh, this very much uh, because usually the classes they had uh, were a little bit ago and uh, the content, the focus that we, that we have in these lectures here is very much on also uh, to, uh, how to apply the theoretical concepts. So we do have a lot of uh, case studies and discussion. And the good thing is that uh, in, in those classes, because uh, all the students do have, have uh, certain backgrounds, um, it, it, usually people learn a lot from each other and everybody can contribute uh, some cases or ask specific questions also uh, uh, based on their background. Uh, so that is something that is, that is very valuable in those classes. Um, and in general, you see that we cover a, a very broad spectrum of um, management skills. So as I said, we start with the strategy in general management, um, but then uh, we also go um, very early on in the blog that you see uh, on the lower left, uh, HR organization and leadership. And then again, here we had, do have a very broad spectrum. Uh, for example, looking at uh, organizational behavior and design, communication skills, negotiation techniques, intercultural competence, because that is something that you more and more need when you want to uh, assume a management position. And I mean, that should be the goal of all of you to, to grow within your career to then acquire a management position. And for this, you need a, a, a wide set of skills as well. Um, then in the second semester, um, uh, what you you do have is uh, you have um, the, the, the finance blocks, so finance uh, and accounting. Uh, those things are covered also from various aspects. And then uh, we look uh, uh, later at marketing, uh, uh, which also uh, looks at the, the public relations management, customer relationships management, which is also very important, uh, but also crisis management. Um, and uh, ending up um, content-wise in Dortmund uh, with um, business law, international business law and, and corporate governments, uh, corporate social responsibility and ethics, uh, which is also something that a manager nowadays really needs to be firm in. And uh, these uh, blocks that you see uh, in the dark color all taking care of place in Dortmund are complemented with the international modules. And here what we do is that we combine the regional topics with um, topics that are a specific strength uh, of the country that you're in and also the partner university. So um, what in the next slide I would like to do is show you the, um, show you the uh, different uh, partner schools that we have and uh, according to uh, the, the recent participants of the program, uh, uh, there's some really nice gems in here and, and uh, every time I, I hear from the students coming back, uh, they're just full of praise uh, for, for the, uh, these modules and for the universities. So uh, starting uh, at the top was the Solway uh, Brussels School of Economics and Management. Uh, this is one of the uh, very, very good schools uh, in, in Brussels and the focus we have here 
is first on economics, but then also on uh, all aspects of European management, European decision making, and what we usually include also, what the partner schools include, is also a trip to a business or to the European Parliament, so you really get to see something of the country. Um, and uh, the Solvay uh, uh, School was, for example, ranked uh, number 20 in the Financial Times Business School in 2010. So it's, it's a very well-known and renowned school. Um, staying in the developed world, um, then we have the University of California in Riverside. Um, also a very good school. So here uh, what you do is... Um, you uh, have some some uh, advanced management techniques, some finance, some some marketing, um, and that school is also uh, good. As, uh, it was ranked uh, in the top uh, 117 uh, also in 2010, 2011. Um, and it, that is also a school where um, usually the students tend to uh, stay for a little bit longer and they usually uh, tend to spend a couple of day, vacation days in, in California as well. So when you're planning on that uh, module, uh, be sure to include some vacation days as well uh, because so far uh, all of the cohorts have been doing that. Um, since when you when you look at the, the development right now, uh, the economic power is more and more shifting towards the uh, developing countries. Um, we also included two uh, modules in Hong Kong and in India, because those are the markets that will become more and more important, and that will become also very important for you as as managers and in leadership uh, and future leadership or present leadership positions. Uh, so what we have here is. We have the uh, Hong Kong Polytechnic University. Um, it was um, in, in 2011. Uh, it was also ranked uh, about 115, 116 um, uh, in the in the world, um, and uh, it is also a, a very broad um, uh, spectrum that they're uh, covering there. Um, with a with a uh, business center that has uh, intensive. Um, dis um, uh, intensive um, ties towards also the government and other other uh, research institutes. Um, and last but not least, our last stint is in India, um, the Indian Institute of Management in Indore, um, which uh, was uh, ranked number four uh, of the India top 50 business schools uh, in 2011 also. And what we do here is um, besides uh, doing business in India, uh, the other focus is on IT and innovation management. So you see what we do is we, we try to combine the local content with uh, whatever aspect, whatever area uh, that country or that uh, school uh, is, is uh, really strong in. So, so we really learn from those uh, who are at the, at the uh, cutting edge uh, of the research as well. Um, to go on, uh, the international orientation is one of the strengths of the programs. Another strength is uh, what you see here, the coaching. Um, so what we do have is, besides the classes that you attend, um, you will have coaching sessions. Uh, and those are uh, individual one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching sessions, which will go on throughout the entire um, program. Um, so you have the first uh, sessions with the coaches already in the first semester, and they will continue uh, uh, until the last semester as well. So you have about si uh, six um, uh, sessions with the coaches over those four terms, and you see uh, also, uh, for example, things that they uh, focus on, so communication behavior, team spirit, leadership skills, conflict behavior. Um, and, of course, they do have a certain set of skills that they focus on, uh, but it's also very individual. So if you have a specific area that you really want to work on, uh, so something that, that uh, you see as a specific development need, that is something that you should bring uh, into the coaching. And from my own experience, uh, having uh, had leadership coaching, um, that is something that is very, very valuable uh, because it really helps you to advance in those areas uh, that you want to put focus on. Um, and what you do is you have a personal development log, so, so the insights that you gain from the coaching will not be lost. 
and that is something that you will do uh, as time goes on. So that is also a, a very interesting and strong point in our program. Uh, so you have uh, the, the content that you learn as a set of broad, broad set of management skills that you need for, for any kind of leadership position. And then you have the international uh, orientation, um, you have uh, present day uh, economic centers like Brussels, like the US, but also looking forward um, to the, to the uh, growing influence of the uh, emerging countries, you have time in, in uh, Hong Kong and time in India. So all that is covered as well. Um, and to finish up, uh, just to give you a brief insight in how a typical day at ISM could look like, and uh, this is taken from my strategy uh, session, uh, from a strategy class that I just uh, gave in, in April for the, uh, for the present uh, cohort. So what we would do, uh, it started at 830, um, we would do introduction to strategy, so uh, that would be, for example, going through the room saying, uh, so, so a strategy statement, how would that look like for your uh, organization, then in the next session we would look, like uh, look at the strategic positioning, looking at the environment, looking at all the forces that determine um, the strategic options and as well as the position of a company and what we do is uh, we do a lot of we have a lot of discussion we do a lot of case studies so for example in the class that I was giving um, uh, we had uh, several case studies and one of them uh, took about one and a half hours because uh, I, at this stadium that you're in it is very important that you that you also apply uh, the, the concept so theory is one part but also applying it discussing it with the lecturer uh, but also amongst yourself uh, that is a very very important uh, part of the program uh, because that is something uh, we want to teach you things that you can use in your job uh, now on the next Monday morning uh, but as well in, in the next couple of days uh, when you uh, climb up your career ladder. Uh, so this is a, a quick overview of the, of the content that we have, of the international orientation, of uh, <clears throat> the coaching, and what a typical day uh, would look like. Uh, so with that, I would like to uh, hand over again to Anke Jünken, and again, we are switching the screen, so bear with me for a second, please. Okay, so hello again. <clears throat> I will continue with a short overview um, of our, our lecturers in the MBA program. Um, it shows that they have different backgrounds, that there is a variety. Some of them are working in bigger companies, some of them run their own business, and of course that their positions and functions uh, differ as you can see uh, here. I'll we'll switch over to the next slide. Uh, here is a statistic of the work experience of our last peer groups in the course. The average work experience of our participants today is between six and seven years. And as you can see, it increased uh, continuously as we had in the very beginning in comparison more students with three or four years of work experience. The second statistic uh, shows us the percentage of uh, international students we had and have nowadays in our MBA program. Um, and that here we had um, also a really strong increase. So now um, I come to the slide um, with the examinations. To give you an overview about the examinations, uh, <laughs> you would have to focus. Uh, in total, the course includes 13 uh, examinations, seven written exams, and six assignments. Um, the workload um, for your studies is in total 2,250 hours. You will have 450 hours of presence at the university. Uh, here in uh, Dortmund um, or abroad, and additionally, uh, 1,800 hours self-study. So there are also some fees. So the uh, regular tuition fee for the whole program is 25,800 euros. There is an early bird discount um, if you submit your application documents until the 
uh, 31st of January of each year, which is a thousand euro discount on the regular study fee. Also, I would like to give you some short information about some financing uh, options. One option is to apply um, also until the end of January for our ISM scholarship, which is a 50% tuition fee reduction. And the second option is also tax deductibility. To receive this support from our university, the criteria um, are the financial circumstances of the applicant, grades, means academic potential, uh, and also engagement in extracurricular activities. If you need more information on that, we can send you our financing bro brochure or um, our information sh uh, sheet with uh, reasonable hints. So if you want to apply, I would like to give you at least all information about our admission process. The admission requirements you find on the right side, um, the applicant need at first um, a first degree of uh, six semesters with 180 or 210 ECTS, a minimum, a minimum of uh, two or three years of work experience. Um, this depends on the ECTS um, you have, on the degree you have. If you have 180 ECTS, you would need three years of work experience and with 210 ECTS already, two years of work experience are sufficient. So furthermore, you need a TOEFL certificate with 80 points to prove your English knowledge. And um, now it comes to the admission process. Until our regular application deadline, which is February 28th each year, uh, you can submit us your application documents, um, the certificate certificate of your graduation, this would be certificates about your work, a motivation letter, two passport photos, a CV, two reference letters of uh, professors in the past or employers and the fulfilled application form, um, which we will check the documents, your application documents, and if the requirements are fulfilled, fulfilled, we will invite you for a personal interview with Ms. Finken and shortly afterwards, within a few days, you will know if we offer you study place in our MBA program or not. So now I come to the end of our webinar and here you can see Ms. Finken's and my contact details. Now I'd like to switch to Ms. Stratz again. Yeah, thank you, uh, Anke Jünk, and also thank you, Dr. Finken, for this interesting presentation. Um, now we will have some time for questions, so feel free to write them down in the chat window. Um, you can already write them now. At the moment, I don't see any questions, so um, I think you can take a few minutes again to write them down. In the meantime, maybe Dr. Fink and Anke Jünken can give us some more kind of special information. Um, for example, from your point of view, what's the motivation for students to do the MBA, especially at ISM? So maybe you can share some of your experiences with the last cohort. Thank you. Um, if uh, you don't mind, I'll uh, just start uh, answering your, your point. Um, and uh, as, as you saw, that I also have some broad experience in consulting and banking. And what I saw is that if you really want to uh, take on a leadership a position or a management position, you need a broad set of skills. And that is something that this program offers you uh, because it touches on all relevant aspects. Um, in a, in a management position, you don't necessarily need to be a, a full ex, uh, uh, um, expert in, in uh, these areas, but you need to have a good understanding. You need to know what the critical topics are. And that is also something that uh, is, is very good at ISM, that uh, the lecturers you have here, um, they all have the practical background. So, for example, in finance, uh, you will be taught by a former uh, head of treasury. You will be taught by a former CFO. Uh, so the lecturers really know what they're talking about. Um, so that is that is one thing uh, in, in terms of the management skills that you learn here, uh, that you really uh, have lecturers uh, that have been there, that have done it, and that usually got the t-shirt, um, so to speak. Um, 
and the, and the second thing is, uh, in terms of the international orientation, uh, as I said, what you see is that um, you right now have um, a little bit of a, of a struggle of a balance of power. You have your um, present-day economic powers like the US, like Europe, um, but you also have in the increasing influence of the emerging countries. And if you look at predictions how um, middle-class consumption is, is rising in those countries, um, the, the, the power will uh, shift very much to these uh, countries over the next uh, 10 to 20 years. And that will be the time when you will be in, in leadership positions. So that is something what I also think is, is quite unique about this program that uh, it because most programs they 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 usually cover uh, one area or, or maybe have 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 two uh, students abroad, but what we wanted to do is really to give you the opportunity to uh, see both uh, and visit both areas the the uh, <coughs> developed countries and the developing countries, because for for management and leadership position it is very important to understand. Uh, both uh, areas uh, and, and, and really see how people work um, and, and how a business is being done in all of those areas. So I think that is another very, very strong um, point of the program. And to wrap up, of course, the coaching um, is, is very valuable um, because it is something where, where you uh, really work on those issues that you want to grow on um, and that is something uh, that, that really helps you to uh, develop and improve your, your leadership skills. Um, and I can say that because I've, I've had the uh, benefit of leadership coaching um, and I found that very valuable also for me to, to uh, progress within my career. So that would be uh, the point from, from my side, uh, again, just uh, uh, repeating those, those strong points that I think are uh, very good, especially at ISM, because it really has. Uh, it, it is a very broad uh, program that offers a lot of uh, more or less unique highlights. Thank you for for this. Uh, we also heard a lot about the examinations and what students do have to do. Maybe you can tell also a little about the way they do projects and the way classes are organized. Um, as I said, we do have a high degree of practical application. Um, and I, I can say that, for example, for my class, um, that we do have several case studies. And then with the one case study that took uh, uh, 90 minutes, so that was like an entire session just devoted to the case study. I think that is also something that most uh, lecturers are also quite flexible. So, for example, if an interesting question is coming up from the students, uh, then uh, that is something that is being extensively discussed. Um, so that is also something that we do when we really have the focus on the practical application and, and uh, uh, really uh, teaching and discussing um, how you uh, need those, those concepts in your everyday life, not only now but also uh, in, in the respective positions that you have. And that is also mirrored in the kind of examination. Of course, we do have some regular uh, classical examinations where you sit down for uh, a certain degree of time and, and you, you solve the problems. Uh, but on the other hand, a lot of it is also done uh, via um, uh, essays, uh, so examinations where you have a certain topic and then you write a, a short paper on that, uh, which also allows you the flexibility to work on those uh, exams uh, when, when time allows for you. Um, so we usually have eight weeks, uh, so that is uh, something that is also uh, adaptable to, to your schedule. Um, so, so that is also something that, that will help uh, students uh, who do these programs as you, you all, if you join, um, during their regular uh, working time. So that is something that also is, is beneficial in that respect. Okay, thank you. Well, kind of more practical questions. We, uh, got an overview about the different modules and when they when they take place. But what happens if students are not able to participate in a module? You know, everybody is working, so it could be possible that uh, you cannot make it. What happens then? 
Um, yes, we uh, we have had this uh, uh, on occasion, and I mean, of course, um, the uh, the sessions are there for you to attend, and for you, it's very beneficial to attend. But uh, if there is something coming up, um, a very important project, um, we had uh, the, the uh, a, a student who was recently uh, appointed uh, the head of, of the German unit of his, his company, um, he had two days of very important meetings with, with clients. And, I mean, of course, that is something that uh, is very important, so uh, you would be required to uh, catch up with the content, um, but you usually have the slides and your peers are there so they can also uh, uh, share notes with you. Um, so that is something uh, that has not been a problem in the past. Um, of course, uh, it would be lovely if you could attend all of the sessions, uh, but yes, um, we are all working. Uh, we all know that sometimes there are meetings that are just too critical to miss. Uh, so yes, that it has happened in the past and uh, everybody survived it. Okay, thank you. Well, at the moment I don't see any questions in the chat window, so I guess uh, there aren't any questions at the moment. Um, well, then I have to say thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed it. Well, feel free to contact us anytime if you have questions. So, um, as soon as Ms. Finken will be available, and we all wish you a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you very much also from my side.